Let's talk about the transition to American Gods, you know, that absolutely took the TV world by storm. I'm sure everyone in here is, is a big fan of that show. Um, <laughs> sure you are. <laughs> Most of them are all like, you mean he'd done something after all the others? I saw him on Strictly for a bit, but I never saw no American Gods. They might be big Hollyoaks fans. They might be, they might be. It's funny, people are always like, what did you do since Hollyoaks haven't seen you? And I'm just like, <laughs> do you not watch telly? I've been doing bits. Um, but no, yeah, American Gods was huge. It was awesome. It was a, it was a big kind of uh, big break for me. I was doing another show called The Hundred. Yes. And I was, uh, I was playing the. Uh, Lincoln. And obviously, we all know what happened on that show. I wanted to get off that show for a while because the producers a muppet, and um, they let me audition for for other shows. And it was actually a journalist in San Diego. Comic Con, who said you should like audition for this show, American Gods, because I think you need a perfect Shadow Moon. And I was like, I've never heard of that. It's 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 like what? Mm. So I went and googled it, looked it up, and I was like, actually, this is pretty cool. Spoke to my agents and said, look, can you put me up for an audition for this show? And like they said to casting, would you see Ricky? And they're like, oh my god, yeah, we thought he was tied up in the hundred. My reps were like, mm, he might be leaving. Um, they were very you know, clever about that. They didn't say like. He hates the producer. Um, and they let me audition and I got it and it was awesome. And it, it literally changed my life. It blew up. Like, you know, they were sending me to Brazil, to South Africa, Australia, um, because it's on stars in America, but it's on Amazon Prime around the rest of the world. And so I worked with Ian McShane, who's like, I oh, love joy and you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, Caribbean, but he doesn't like doing press. Uh, no, he doesn't want. He doesn't want to do press. And then Emily Browning, who plays my wife in the show, doesn't like doing press. And so that's the other, my other two. So I'm number one, and Ian's number two, and she's number three on the call sheet. But because the two and three don't want to do press, they ended up having to send me everywhere, which I didn't mind because, like, it meant I got to travel the world and like do all the PR and the marketing. And it was awesome. But yeah, people are like, oh, what's Brazil like? And oh, what's South Africa like? What's, what's New Zealand like? And I'm like, I could tell you what every hotel's like, or every airport's like, and what every convention room is like, but I can't actually tell you what the city's like because I was always jet lagged and I never went anywhere. I was in New Zealand for a week, and like, they're like, oh, did you go to the Hobbit thing? You go to like, see all the sets, the sets and stuff. And I was like, I never left the jacuzzi. <laughs> I was so tired all the time, like it was exhausting. But um, that show was nuts, it was wicked, it was great fun. I learned a lot from all the different actors on that show. I got to work with like idols like Ian, um, Peter Stamar, Gillian Anderson, you know, it took all my strength to not call her Scully from X-Files. That was cool. But no, nah, wicked show, awesome show, it changed my life. Um, it set me up really nice in America and uh, loving life, man. Because the genre of those shows obviously brings you to events like this. I just wanna know, are you a nerd yourself? And what, what's the nerdy stuff you're into in terms of cinema and, and TV. I know you're a bit of a big Star Wars guy. I was a massive star. I had the Millennium Falcon as a kid. Um, I think my brother broke it. I'll never forgive him. <laughs> um, I had like all the stormtroopers. Like and I used to chew them a bit, so I had loads because I used to bite their heads off and their hands off and stuff. I was. I don't know why they were just really sponge. It was like just like a chew toy. <laughs> oh no, I never messed with Chewbacca. Chewbacca was always. And actually, now I might chew on Chewbacca as well. I, I don't know. It's that comfort thing. They were just really tasty. That's Chewbacca. definitely going to get quotes. It was weird. It was weird. Or chewed on Chewbacca. <laughs> that does not sound right. It doesn't sound great. Does it doesn't it? sound right. No, I'm, I'm a big nerd. I love. I love all the like the Marvel DC stuff. I'd love to be involved in that world. Um, and yeah, the Star Wars stuff. I, I'm like. The great thing is, is I've got loads of friends who are just in these worlds as well, so that's, you kind of feel like a part of it and stuff, it's really cool. Um, but yeah, like, I, I loved it all. Like, I, got my, I, got, um, I met the producer of uh, Transformers and he gave me an Optimus Prime toy. And I've never forgiven my mum because like, when I was a kid, Optimus Prime was like the Buzz Lightyear of my time where you just couldn't get it. Like, all the mums were trying to get it for Christmas and it was never on the shelves and they are sold out and there's empty shelves everywhere. And so my mum never gave me an Optimus Prime. And I, again, like, like my brother, I've never forgiven her for not giving me an Optimus Prime. And I went to the, this producer's office and he was like, what? I told him the story and he's like, I've got an Optimus Prime right here, do you want one? And I was like, oh my God, it's so amazing. And so he gave me an Optimus Prime there in his office, like this toy. And so I took a picture with it and I sent it to my mum. I said, you failed. <laughs> 
asked her out. I did, I said it to mum. This picture of me the producer and Optimus Prime, I was like, he got me a toy that I wanted. When you get excited, you turn to an American teenage girl. What's that? When you get excited, you turn into an American teenage girl. I turn into a valley girl, it's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Because I live in the valley, I'm up in the, I'm outside, like as I got older, I've moved out of like the, the cool, like, hip town, like, yeah. I was in West Hollywood, like where all the parties were, where all the craziness is, then I moved out to the water, and now I'm like, I bought a house like, just out in the sticks now, I'm in the burbs, where you've got more space, it's quieter, it's chilled man, it's where all the retired people are, where they're not trying so hard, <laughs> where everyone's just like, relax bro. <laughs> Stop trying so hard. <laughs> if you're in Hollywood, like, if, you, if you're in Hollywood and you're having a conversation, you don't just like look at people in the eyes. In Hollywood, everyone's like, yeah, so yeah, no. And then the thing is, because they're looking for the next person to talk to who might be more famous or who's looking at them. It's like, yeah, yeah, you know, no, no, that's awesome. You're fabulous. It's great. No, 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 mm, purple, purple. Yeah, so I'll, I gotta go. So see you later. Have fun. That's how they talk, and that's, that's how you are in, in, in Hollywood. Everyone's got to look amazing. Like, so when there's a big mountain like hike that everyone walks up, it's called Runyon Canyon, right in Hollywood. And it's like a, I say mountain, it's a hill in England. Um, but people go up there to, to train, to work out, to hike. Full hair, full makeup, full like outfits, because they're not there to hike. They're there to get scouted by agents, managers, find a boyfriend, find a girlfriend. And it's just a meat market. It's like Tinder on, on a, it's like a Tinder workout. <laughs> so literally people go there to date, basically. I'm not gonna lie, I, I met a girl. Uh, I dated one girl once. Uh, yeah, you did meet her as well, actually. Yeah, I flew her over, yeah. Doesn't matter, we don't need to talk about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Tried to test it for me, was it? I mean, it works, it works. I mean, she was in full, full aloe vera, not aloe vera, that's, uh, <laughs> that's something different. <laughs> Has there ever been an experience for you where you've genuinely been starstruck in your career, even since moving out in America? I've only been starstruck. One, two, and I was here one. Ah, three. Three times. And it wasn't in America at all. Um, like, I get, I get, like, it's cool to meet certain people. Like, um, you know, and it's weird when I think about who some of my friends are, and I'm looking on my phone, and someone will like text me, and I'm just, <laughs> it's cool. Uh, <laughs> I know her, I know him. But the only time I got proper like silent starstruck was when like I met Sir Alex Ferguson, and like I was a Man United manager, legend, and everything. I was a Man United fan growing up. I know it's controversial, but. <laughs> I think it's because, like, as a kid, I grew up and he was Alex Ferguson, Sir Alex Ferguson, and like we got the same birthday, New Year's Eve, and I went to a Man United players party, and he was there. And I'm like, okay, this is it. I'm gonna speak to Sir Alex Ferguson. We got the same birthday. And I'm like thinking of this is my oh, this is my chat line. Like, hey, yo, we got the same birthday. Like, no, that's not gonna work. Hi, I'm Ricky. Um, when's your birthday? Mine too. No. Like, and I'm literally just like trying to figure out how do I like open this conversation. And he walked past, and I was like. Bottle bit. Melted! <laughs> um, so there was that. There was another one with. Um, <laughs> so I was filming Dream Team like early on, and we filmed at Three Mill Studios down in East London. And do you remember Nigel from EastEnders with the perm? Like older people will know, like, now I'm showing my age. Oh man. Um, and like, I was walking with Tim, uh, with Clyde, Clyde Connolly, uh, Tim Smith, who played Clyde Connolly, and we were like walking to the canteen through the studio, and he was just like, I think he was filming something else, and he was walking the other way, and we were walking along, chatting, and, and he went, he walked by, and he's like, you're right, lads, and we were like, hey, you're right. I walked along a little bit, and I was trying to play a call, and I was like, is it weird, like, I got a buzz then, because he's like, me too, okay, we were really excited, and Nigel from EastEnders just walked past it. It is so weird because I've met so many different people from different shows at that time, and I'm like, Nigel? <laughs> he wasn't even one of the good ones, but I was like, so excited I saw him. And then the, the main one, that like literally on my days, so I was doing a talk show with Pamela Anderson, and um, before we went out, it was like, I was in the canteen with my PR agent, and she walked through like the room, and she came through with her entourage, and I swear down, she walks in slow motion. <laughs> Baywatch was a, was a real thing like that. She, they didn't slow her down. She walks in slow motion, like her hair proper, like goes like that. And I heard music. <laughs> like, so she had a wind machine following her, 
slow motion and I heard music. And she literally walked in slow motion. It was so weird. Like this, I, I genuinely felt like this was happening. I was like, this is crazy. And she walked past me and she, because she knows she's, she's going to interview me. And she was like, she walked past me and she went, hi. And I was like, <laughs> that came out of my mouth. <laughs> I didn't say hello, hi, no. <laughs> and my face did some weird. <laughs> like Chandler from Friends. <laughs> she must be like, oh, what a weird guy. But like, listen, hmm. <laughs> and like, my, my agent just went, what was that? And I went, I don't know. <laughs> She's like, I have never seen you melt in front of a woman. I was like, she's not a woman, she's a goddess. I feel, I feel like your next project should be a fly on the wall with you just being you. Oh, no. but like, she, she was my awakening as a child. Like, guys, you know, my age, you know, but she, she was my first. <laughs> I won't say more. He, he knows as well. You know what I'm talking about. She was my first, I was in love, so like to finally meet her, like, I had nothing but, Turned you into a teenage boy. Oh, I turned to a teenage boy, and like when I did the, the talk, and I was talking to, I, I, I relaxed by then, I got used to it. So when she started talking to me, it was fine. We, were, we, had, we started to banter and flirt, and it was great. And I was like, I'm living the dream. It was cool. But the first time, yeah, she walked in slow motion. I heard music that came from nowhere, and she had a wind machine in the canteen. She didn't, but I felt like she did. <laughs> so yeah, those are the three times, I, and I've literally met like, like, and it's crazy, but those are the three ones where I literally just shut down and just nothing happened. I tried to tell my face to do stuff, and my, my mouth wasn't working. Mm. Yeah, the Alex Ferguson one, I could have guessed after our chat yesterday, but yeah. the other two, you caught me off guard. Well, Nigel from EastEnders is just weird, isn't it? Like, like I met like some, I don't want to name drop, I've met some people, and I'm just like, you'd be like, oh my god, I'm like, yeah, it was well, cool. Who's, who's, the most, who's the most famous person that you what, but that just, that's relative, it just depends what you like. If you like, like, pop stars. Who's the most famous person to you? Yeah. Alex Ferguson! <laughs> and Pamela Anderson! In, in movies, in movies. In movies, well, I met, so I met Tom Cruise. Oh. You know, and I'm just like, he's awesome, but I didn't want to bother him. We were at a premiere, and like, he was sat in the row behind me, like, two, <laughs> I didn't, I say I wasn't phased, but I'm like, he was right behind me, two foot to the right. <laughs> he wore a green suit, he had yellow socks. He, I know everything about He had four pieces of popcorn and he switched to an apple. No. But like, I met Tom Cruise and I'm just like, and like, he's like my favorite. He's like, like one of my, Tom Cruise, if I could work with anyone, it'd be like Tom Cruise and, and Will Smith because grow, and Sandra Bullock. Because growing up, like that was my, my jam, you know. Sandra Bullock, I was in love with, you know, speed and all that. And then Tom Cruise was Top Gun, which again, awesome. And then Will Smith is Will Smith, Fresh Prince. Um, but I met Tom Cruise and I'm just like, hey, how's it going? I was, I was really cool. Like, like it's normal. Okay, well, because everyone was there, you're at a premiere. And you don't want to look stupid because someone could film it and be like, did you see Ricky Will melt down on the, on the red carpet? He's like, hi Tom, oh my god, you're fabulous. Oh my god, I love you. Tom, that's amazing. Days of Thunder, it's awesome. She'd be like, did you see Ricky? That's awesome. Played it cool there. Hey Tom, how you doing? You good? Yeah. Yeah. And then you had a little cry in the side of And then you got, you've got to make out like that you're busy because you don't want to be that Klingon dude. So it's just like, how's it going? Yeah, because you don't want him to just blow you off and be like, because he, he's busy, everyone wants to speak to him. So I'm like, hey, how's it going? Yeah, I'll, I'll let you get on though. I'd love to meet you. Pleasure. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Compose yourself. <laughs> it was cool. It was awesome. Um, but that's what I mean. So I've met people. But Nigel from EastEnders <laughs> got buzzed. <laughs>